Okay, I'm gonna do a video for a pressure cooker. Um, did one already. Doing another one too, because um, a lot of people are asking me to do it from start to end. So the first thing I wanna go over is this weight right here. This is a universal weight. Um, a lot of people are telling me not to use this one. It's a 10 pound, 15 pound, and five pound. You have to look up your altitude where you live and use the weight that your altitude tells you to use. I live in Colorado, so I'm in a very high altitude, so I always use a 15 weight. So these are so the weights. The 15 I... pound weights. So from the beginning. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to get my pressure cooker out. I want to put about enough warm hot water in there, put the seal in it, just to kind of warm it up helps it seal a little bit better so I'm gonna leave that in there for a while I've already got my food prepped or what I'm gonna cook always have your food ready before you start setting up your pressure cooker just makes life a lot more easier so now that I have that that seal should be pretty well warmed up I'm gonna go ahead and put it on my lid and drain this water out okay I just put my seal in and like with the other video, right here is your lock. You see that little pin right here on top of my thumb? You want to make sure your seal is behind that. See how it's behind it? Or you're not going to lock correctly. Okay, we're going to check our stem and make sure we can blow through it or see through it. There you go. You can see through it right there so we know it's not clogged. Our other seal is a pressure seal. On this side, this black one, sorry, I don't have nobody here helping me record, so I'm doing this by myself today. That one is, if the pressure gets over too much pressure, that's going to blow out, so that your pressure cooker cannot blow up. Um, these are the older pressure cookers. Okay, now that I've got my, my seal in there, I'm going to put my plate in here. Got my plate. I'm going to put my plate in here. I'm going to put enough water on here in here just to get to the top of this. Okay, so let me put some water in it. I'll be right back. Okay, I just put water in here. I don't know. I guess you can't kind of see it. Just barely above the plate. Okay, now I'm going to fill this up with my food that I've already prepped. Uh, making halushka again, which I have a video on there on how to make it. It's a simple recipe. Uh, it's a German food. It's hamburger and pork and rice. Um, just go check out the video. It's kind of cool. It's really good. Make mashed potatoes with it. So now that I've got that in, I'm going to go ahead and turn my stove on to high. I got to turn my stove on to high. Getting that starting to warm up. I'm going to go ahead and put my food in. Okay, now that I have my meat and stuff in there and everything else on the bottom, um, I really don't have nothing on top that's going to plug my stem. Nothing small, but this is about as full as you want it. I really wouldn't go much fuller, actually. I usually don't even go this full. So now that we've got our seal on here, you can hear it starting to cook up. We're going to go ahead and put our lid on, and then we're going to close it. You can hear it starting to boil up inside. I want you to notice the time is 4.37. So what we're doing now is we're going to heat this up until we start getting a lot of steam out of here and this lock pops up. And for safety, let's always keep a couple extra dry towels by close by just in case it starts leaking around the seal so you can get off your stove. Um, this is a glass top stove. Um, make sure you wax your stove before you do this. Let's see how long it takes for this to start steaming. We are now at 4.38. Okay, we're, in, we're about 10 minutes into this. 9 minutes into this. Little, little bit of steam's coming up. I've got a little bit of water dripping on this side. Coming from the seal on the top. I think, I hope. So that's why you always want to keep a towel close by. So you can get that water off. 
especially on a glass top stove. So just really, we gotta keep an eye on that. I know my seal should be good. It's not that old, but it's a good possibility it could be bad. Okay, my lock just popped up. I got a good steam coming out of there. Also got a little leak here. You can't, I guess you can't see the steam on the camera, but there you go, a little bit. See it steaming? We only got steam for about 30 seconds to a minute. And make sure we got a good hot steam coming out of there and it's hot. Coming out of the top. Oh, time. We're at 4.52. So I'm just going to pay attention to this so this will stop leaking on mine here in a second I'm going to go ahead and put the stem on the top okay it's not doing nothing yet because it still has to build up pressure which will seal the rest of this for me so I'll be right back okay my lock finally came all the way up So it's, it's almost off leaking, it's leaking a little bit, but we're just gonna let this start building up pressure now. Um, when you're using your towel, do not do not leave your towel on the stove, that's, that's a fire hazard. Wipe it real quick, wipe it real quick, and get your towel back off. Use, it, use a towel you don't care about. Okay, so we're at 453. Got my, my, my 15 on there. We're gonna see how long this takes to start chirping. Okay, it's just barely starting to rattle. We're almost five o'clock. So we wanna let this get to rattling a little bit better. Everything finally sealed up. Uh, my stem wasn't coming out all the way. My lock wasn't coming out all the way. I um, finally got it to pop out. So to let it build up the pressure. Um, once the thing gets to rattling, what a lot of people do, you can hear it starting to get louder. So what a lot of people do is they will adjust their temperature down on the stove top to keep this at a light rattle like this. Um, I never have, some people recommend it. I guess it depends on your stove. Um, I keep mine at high the whole time I'm cooking until it's done. Uh, this recipe calls for 30 minutes and it started rattling. So I can actually start the timer right now. So I think I will do that. So I just started the timer, 30 minutes, it's 5.01, it's going to slowly get louder, and really start boiling, you see the whole thing shaking on the stove. Can't tell if that's me shaking or the, or the the pressure cooker shaking. But we're gonna cook this for 30 minutes. You can hear it. You can see it. No more leaks. I don't have no water leaking out nowhere. If I did, then I would just I would sit here in in the kitchen and babysit it. I'm still gonna sit in the kitchen and watch it. Never never leave a pressure cooker alone. I'll always stay in the room with it so you can hear it. Kind of keep an eye on it so you know what's going on. So I'll see you in about 30 minutes. There she goes. She's starting to rattle up a little bit better. You can see it. You can hear it. I'm 
Okay, see you in 30 minutes. Okay, our timer just went off. Um, I got my neck hook on here, so hopefully this will help. So, I'm going to go ahead and turn the stove off. And what some people say to do, I hope you can hear me, take pot holders, grab it carefully. I'm just going to lift it and move it over so it's on the other side of my stove. So we're going to let it cool just a little bit. See my little burnt mark there? That, that'll clean up good because I just waxed the stove. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my sink on the hot water. So start getting hot water going through my sink. Okay, if you can see that. Okay, see that water is pretty warm. Okay, there we go. It's nice and warm. I'm going to take my pressure cooker. I am not going to remove the cap. Leave the, 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 the cap on the top. Grab your pressure cooker. Carefully move it to your sink. Set it in your sink. Leaving the cap on. Scared me there for a second. We're going to start running hot water on this. You really see it steaming up. Now we're going to slowly start cooling the water down. See the lock went down just a little bit. We're just going to slowly cool this. Cooler and cooler there. My lock just dropped. I think you heard it drop. Right there. The lock just dropped. Now we're going to go colder water. We're just going to keep cooling this. Now once that lock is up, when you start cooking, there's no way to open this pressure cooker until that lock is dropped back down. If that lock is up, there's no way you can open this pressure cooker at all, no matter what you do. You'll, you'll, you'll end up breaking it if you, if you actually can get it open. Okay, so we've got it pretty cool. Now we're going to go colder water. The lock has dropped, so I'm not real worried about it. But just kind of touch the weight. Make sure that it's not steaming, which we know it's not because the lock dropped. I'm going to take that off. Cool it off. I don't, don't pour water down the skin. You don't want water in the skin. Okay, we have zero pressure in here. We know that for sure because we took the, the percolator off the top. So once we took that off, we know there's no pressure left. We waited till the lock dropped, kept cooling it, slowly took that off. Now we're going to go ahead and open it. Now this is going to be hot inside still. So we're going to open it. Oh, see, I had a little bit of sauerkraut in my lock. That's why it wasn't sealing correctly. Okay, that makes sense. See, that's that's what we're... Um, that kind of screwed me up, so I had to... Oh, don't know if you can see that. I got sauerkraut in here. It got into my lock, which wouldn't let it go all the way up, so I had to fiddle with it a little bit with a knife. Um, kind of explain that with the other video. But there you have it. Okay, now we're going to transfer this over. So there's from the beginning to the end. I'm hoping I didn't miss anything. Um, if I did, watch the other video and then go back to this one. And with this, we're going to make um, mashed potatoes. Okay, so we're finishing up this video on the pressure cooker. We're all finished. We just got the food transferred out. Um, pressure cookers can be a little finicky, so each one's going to be a little bit different. Mine's, mine's pretty old. Mine needs a new handle so I can replace the lock on it because so, I have to mess with it all the time. But 
I know how to fix it while I'm working on it, while I'm using it, so usually it's no problem. But as you saw in this video, a little bit of sauerkraut got up to it and kind of jammed in there. So it didn't want to seal correctly, so I had to sit and mess with a little knife and kind of pull it up and push it to one side to the other. And then finally got it to seal. Um, probably not a good idea. I should have should have just stopped and took it apart and re-cleaned it and got it. But I, I, know, I know how I'm doing it, so... I feel safe doing it, you know, with, with what I do. So I hope this video helps. And now we're just going to clean it up. Okay, one yeah. last tip. Um, when you take your pressure cooker apart before you wash it, I never leave my seal in there. I always take it out. I wash my seal. I check it for cracks. When you're washing it, do not stretch it. If you stretch it or pull on it from one end to the other, you could stretch it and you could destroy that seal. So be very careful when you wash that seal. Okay, now that I'm done cleaning everything, um, because I waxed my stove, um, the burn marks that were on here on my stove actually just wiped right off after it was nice and cool. I let it cool down to where it wasn't hot no more. Um, made sure I could touch it by hand. Just took a wet towel, wet rag from the sink, and all that wiped right off. That's why it's important to wax your stove also so you don't get scratched if you have a glass top.